As you might know, the F-14 has a pneumatic engine startup system. And as it also lacks an APU, we have to order the plane captain to connect the starter air. We also have to order him to hook up the ground power. Do this via the radio menu under category Ground Crew. Connect ground air supply. Please do this now and then press spacebar to continue. Copy. Chief, turn on the ground power. Ground air supply is now connected. Copy. Ground power is now on. Now, switch on the oxygen to your mask. The next step is to verify that the wings are in oversweep. Check the wings visually and verify that the emergency wing sweep handle is in the oversweep position, which is the farthest back position. The over flag should also be visible on the wing sweep indicator. Press spacebar to continue. Now it's time to verify ICS functionality for communication with Rio and ground crew. To allow communication with the ground crew with the canopy closed later on, set ICS to hot mic. Ask Jester to initiate the non-assisted startup using the Jester communication wheel. The first step on his list will be to check communication. Roger. Respond that you can hear him using the Jester communication wheel. Also check if the landing check. position indicator indicates all down and that the transition light is off. Roger. Jester will now also start to initiate systems in the back cockpit and will eventually tell you to arm your ejection seat. Do not respond to that yet. Press the space bar when done. You should arm your ejection seat. Check warning lights by pulling up the master test switch. Move it to the LTS position and then push it in. The master test switch is pulled up with a right click, moved clockwise with a left click, and then pushed in again with another right click. Verify that all warning, caution, and advisory lights illuminate. Coordinate with Rio to check his lights. Now lift the master test switch and move it to the fire detection and extinguishing position and press in. Check that the left and right fire lights below the ACM illuminates and that the go light on the master test panel also illuminates. Press spacebar when ready. Finally, lift and switch the master test switch to the instrument position and push it down to check the flight instruments. Verify that RPM reads 96%, EGT reads 960 degrees Celsius, fuel flow reads 10,500 pounds per hour, AOA indicates 18 plus or minus 5, wing sweep indicates 45 degrees plus or minus 2.5 degrees, fuel quantity reads 2,000 plus or minus 200 pounds, oxygen quantity reads 2 liters, left and right fuel flow lights illuminates. Jester should now also confirm that his indicator displays the same fuel quantity. The left and right stall warning lights will also flash during this test. Set the master test switch to off. Arm the ejection seat using left shift plus E. Jester should have already told you to do so, and he will continue his startup now. I'm closing the Once canopy. Once you've armed the seat, Jester will close the canopy and warn you about it. Recommend you tuck those fingers under your pits. Press the space bar. All right, let's start. Now, check and set the following on the ACM panel. Gun rate to desired. Sidewinder cool to off. Missile prep to off. Missile mode to norm. Also verify that the station loading windows correspond to loaded armaments. Verify that the emergency stores jettison push button light is out and that the ladder light is also out. Wait for Jester to confirm he's ready to start the engines if he has not already done so. Confirm that the air source switch is set to off. Also, set the hydraulic transfer pump switch to off. Press spacebar to continue. Now, move the emergency flight hydraulic switch to low. Check that the on flag is visible in the emergency flight low hydraulic pressure window. Also verify control over horizontal and rudder control surfaces on the surface position indicator. Press spacebar when done. Next, move the emergency flight hydraulic switch to high. Check that the on flag is present in the emergency flight high hydraulic pressure window. Re-verify control over the control surfaces on the surface position indicator. Deflection rate should be higher than in low. 
Press spacebar when done. Move the emergency flight hydraulic switch to auto low. Check that the off flag is present in both emergency flight low and high windows. Close the emergency flight hydraulics guard. It is now time to start the engines. The engine crank switch is automatically held in position when moved to the left or right engine position. It will disengage automatically at 50% engine RPM. When the engine RPM reaches 20%, check for oil and hydraulic pressure and that the start valve caution light illuminates. When at 20%, move the selected engine throttle to idle to actuate the ignition system and fuel flow. Engine light off should occur within 5 to 15 seconds. EGT temperature should peak around 40 to 50% and not exceed 890 degrees Celsius, which would constitute a hot start. If the engine crank switch doesn't return to center after 50% RPM, set it to off manually before 60% RPM. If the start valve caution light stays on, tell the plane captain to disconnect the starter air. Now, right click to switch the engine crank switch to right for right engine and when at 20%, move the right throttle to idle. Verify that the right generator and right fuel pressure caution lights turn off at 59% RPM and before idle RPM, respectively. The engine instruments at idle should read RPM, 62% to 78%, EGT, 500 degrees Celsius, nominal, fuel flow, 950 to 1400 pounds per hour, nominal, nozzle position, 100%, oil, 25 to 35 PSI, nominal, 15 minimum. Flight hydraulic pressure, 3,000 PSI. Then, order the plane captain to disconnect external power. When done, press spacebar to continue. Chief, turn off the ground power. Copy. Ground power is now off. Now, to check the combined hydraulic pressure, switch the engine crank switch to L for left engine, but without moving the left throttle to idle. When the combined hydraulic pressure reaches 3,000 PSI, switch the engine crank back to off. Press spacebar when done. Now, with the left engine spooled down again, switch the hydraulic transfer pump switch to normal. This should pressurize the combined side from the right engine and maintain a pressure between 2400 and 2600 PSI. When correct, set the hydraulic transfer pump switch to shut off. Also, if it does not pressurize the combined side within 10 seconds, immediately set the hydraulic transfer pump switch to shut off. Next, start the left engine the same way you started the right one. As a reminder, the engine instruments should read RPM 62% to 78%, EGT 500 degrees Celsius nominal, fuel flow 950 to 1400 pounds per hour nominal, nozzle position 100%, oil 25 to 35 PSI nominal, 15 minimum. Combined hydraulic pressure, 3,000 PSI. With both engines now running, order the plane captain to disconnect the starter air. Cycle the air source switch to left engine, right engine, and both engines, and verify cockpit airflow at all three positions. Then leave it in both engines. Once done, 
set the hydraulic transfer pump switch to normal and close the guard. It's now time to tell Jester to start the INS alignment. This process can take up to eight minutes depending on conditions, so it's best to start it as soon as possible after engine start. It's dependent on the parking brake to be set and will stop if that is released. To see what Jester sees and how the alignment is progressing, turn on the HSD and set it to TID repeat to see what he sees on the TID. When you see data on the HSD TID repeat, bring up the Jester command wheel and select desired INS alignment quality. In this case, select font. Okay. You will now see Jester enter the required parameters for INS alignment and then select the alignment mode. When the INS starts alignment, the TID repeat shows a status bar with a symbol moving left to right with extreme right being a final line. The numbers to the left of the status bar show minutes and tenths of minutes in alignment. We are now free to continue our checklist. Turn on the stability augmentation system. Set all three SAS switches to on. Set the master test switch to emergency generator the no-go light should illuminate for about one second before the go light illuminates. Press spacebar when done. When setting the master test switch back to off, we simultaneously check the voltage monitor control unit, or VMCU. The following lights should illuminate for just under two seconds. Pitch stab one and two, roll stab one and two, yaw stab, Oscar Papa, and out. Spoilers? Horizontal Tail Authority, Rudder Authority, Autopilot, and Mock Trim. Set the Master Test Switch to off now and check for the lights. The Rudder Authority light will not go out until reset by the Master Reset push button, and Pitch and Roll SAS switches will now have turned off. Turn both on again. The AHRS light might also illuminate momentarily. Press Spacebar when done. Next up is to check the Augmenter Fan Temperature Control, or AFTC. Begin by setting the left engine select switch to SEC. The left engine SEC light should illuminate on the caution panel, and the left nozzle position indicator should point below zero. Then, set it back to PRI. The caution light should go out, and the nozzle position indicator should now show 100%. Repeat for the right engine using right engine select. Press spacebar when done. Now, set the wing external transfer switch to off. Set UHF function selector to bolt. Set TACAN function selector to transmit and receive. Turn on the ARA-63 power switch, the remaining displays, control switches, and the radar altimeter by scrolling up on the control knob. Check that the pitch trim is zero on the surface's position indicator. With no control input, it should read at zero degrees. Erect the standby attitude gyro by clicking the control knob and turning it until the indicator matches the current attitude. The standby attitude gyro should be erected at least two minutes before takeoff. Then, press the master reset push button. Press spacebar when done. Now, extend the speed brake partially and retract it, then extend it fully and retract it. Check for a fluctuation on the stabilizers to verify the automatic trim is in operation when the speed brake is extended. Also, fully extend the refueling probe by setting the switch to all and then retract it. Check for normal operation and that the transition light illuminates when in between the extended and retracted positions. Finally, cycle the windshield air switch. Press spacebar when done. Set the wing external transfer switch to off and depress the master reset push button. Press spacebar when done. It's now time to extend the wings and check the control surfaces. It's important to note that as we will extend the wings, it is absolutely critical to verify that the wings will clear any obstructions present. If not, or if you're doing a carrier startup, this will be done later. I will inform you at what point the checklist continues when doing that kind of startup. As we have the space, we will now do it anyway for instructional purposes. 
Move the emergency wing sweep handle to the fully forward position, 20 degrees. Engage the spider detent by pushing the handle down and close the guard. Again, this will move the wings. Select wing sweep auto if necessary to sweep them fully forward. As the wings come out of oversweep, the horizontal tail authority light will illuminate momentarily as the stabilizer locks disengage. Press the master reset button to reinitialize the automatic wing sweep program. Set external lights according to the situation and check their operation. Fully extend flaps and slats by moving the lever fully aft. Check for full deflection, operation of outboard spoiler module, and that the stabilizer's trailing edge moves up three degrees. Verify the full range of motion of the control surfaces and that they move with normal speed. Verify horizontal tail shift with DLC input. Set anti-skid spoiler brake switch to bolt. Set the master test switch to stick SW. The spoiler light will illuminate and all spoilers should fall down. After deflecting the stick more than one inch in each direction, the go light should illuminate. Turn off the master test switch. Press spacebar when done. Set the anti-skid spoiler brake switch to off. Retract the flaps and slats. Use the thumb wheel to extend the maneuver flaps and slats fully. Now, select 50 degrees sweep with the wing sweep mode switch. You shouldn't be able to move the commanded position to more than 50 degrees. If you can, immediately select auto. Retract the maneuver flaps and slats fully with the thumb wheel and then select bomb mode with the wing sweep mode switch. Check for normal maneuver flap and slap retraction. Press spacebar when done. Now, open the guard, pull up the emergency wing sweep handle, and move it to 68 degrees, and hold it there. When the oversweep indication appears, move the handle to oversweep and push it in. Select auto on the wing sweep mode switch and depress the master reset push button. Set the anti-skid spoiler brake switch to bolt if not on the carrier. As we are on the carrier, we'll leave it in off. Press spacebar when done. At this point, the checklist for carrier startup or startup without wing movement continues. To press the SET knob on the radar altimeter to initiate the built-in test. The display should indicate 100 feet and the green light should illuminate. Release and the display should show zero feet. The altitude low light should illuminate, and a warning tone should be heard by both pilot and Rio. Check displays for desired mode. Check IMU heading on HUD, VDI, HSD, and BDHI. Note that until the INS alignment is complete, these displays will be degraded. Check flight instruments for normal operation. Press spacebar when ready. Before we can taxi, we have to wait for the INS to finish alignment. If the HSD TID repeater still shows the INS alignment page, wait until it's done and Jester tells you that you're ready to taxi. When ready, press spacebar to continue. The aircraft startup is now complete and you're ready to taxi. This concludes this lesson. Note that you can also practice the startup procedure with the help of Jester-assisted startup. Try it out, for example, in an instant action cold start mission. Simply select Assisted Startup from the Jester menu, and he will read you each item of your checklist and guide you through the procedure. Feel free to continue familiarization of the cockpit controls and practicing taxiing. Otherwise, exit the mission using Escape and then Exit.